10 things about Enkanomiya you might have missed in the 2.4 trailer and special program. I don't know if I'll be able to make a Liwei edition because I only have 5 so maybe I will so it will be less than this one but still equally interesting or maybe I'll focus on each of the new characters in their own separate video. Anyways, starting off, the word Bathysmal or Bathiel from the Bathysmal Bishops is just one level above the abyssal zone in marine biology and oceanography. This bathyal zone is found 200 to 2000 meters below the surface. In Genshin's perspective, it is just right over the abyss underworld that we know of. Hence the increased number of both lectors and heralds and even ruin guards or graders resting in some parts of the region. Safe to say that Enkanomiya is pretty near the abyss order and that the ruin guards themselves wandered all the way here too. Next is the Dainese Mikoshi, which means Great Sun Palanquin. A palanquin is a wheelless vehicle that is carried by humans to carry certain nobles to different locations. This is also known as a portable Shinto shrine, and this palanquin specifically is for a certain sun god that provides light to Enkanomiya, probably an ode to the story of the sun god Amaterasu who was brought out of hiding by the lesser gods. At number 3, comparing the story of Amaterasu, and to Enkanomiya, however, is taken from the book named The Serpent Drake of Tokoyo no Kuni. It's a dark tale of a jealous sun child that overthrew a sage who brought the great light into the kingdom. This great light was only possible because of the great sage named Abe Yoshihisa. The first sun child was jealous of his talent and wanted him imprisoned for his whole life. This all happened before the real threat was ever disposed of which was the deep sea dragon air. So after the imprisonment of Abe Yoshihisa, the sun child and his stolen light was able to keep the dragon air away from their kingdom until they found the Orobaxi, who became their now Watatsumi god. At number 4, going back to the great sun palanquin, we the travelers can actually cycle between day and night cycles after completing a quest, much like a light switch in a room, but this time the devs said that switching from day and night, not just visually of course, we can also interact with certain objects and people depending on the cycle that we choose. At number 5 is going to be after images of people and illusory walls from the day and night states. As said by the devs, the day and night cycles have their own quirks. The night cycle specifically makes the travelers able to speak with after images of the citizens of Enkanomiya. And not just after images of people, we can also see illusory walls and structures that can only be seen when the Dainichi Mikoshi is set to dark mode. By doing so, we'll know more about Enkanomiya's history and what really happened. At number 6 are the islands of Enkanomiya itself. If we base our knowledge of Enkanomiya to the book named The Serpent Drake of Tokoyo no Kuni, we can theorize that Enkanomiya had three main islands. The book states that the Sun Child dove beyond what they called the Three Corners and found a cavern where the Orobaxi was said to live. These three corners are probably what the Dainichi Mikoshi's light can reach the furthest, and this is probably where the people of Enkanomiya draw the line between their land and the land of the Dragon Air, as well as everything else in the Abyss. At number 7 is that there are no statues of the Seven. The land of Enkanomiya, much like the land of Kanria, did not have a god to worship long ago, which means that the people of this country only relied on their own power as humans, therefore used their own technology and power as humans to create their own ways of defense. And one of their greatest feats was created even before they found a god to worship. This god did not come until the Sun Child went out to venture into the abyss and somewhere outside the three islands that they had, he found Orobaxi. At number 8 is the Evernight Temple. One of the locations mentioned in the special program is the Evernight Temple characterized by the corals that seem to look like glowing pieces of parchment under the water. But if you look closely into this scene, we can see a small entrance as well as some other smaller entrances that we can enter. Safe to say we can find more about this deep underworld than just the surface. At number 9 is the River Styx. The River Styx mentioned in this special program was said to run through the entire landscape of Enkanomiya. The devs were obviously talking about the vast endless water below each island of the underground region. The word Styx translated into English is shuddering, meaning intense shaking or vibration. If translated literally, it means the river of shuddering. And if you watched the movie Hercules as a kid, you can see the river Styx is covered in spirits of the dead, and that merely touching it will cause the person to die instantly. Number 10 is going to be a continuation of the river Styx. 
In the Greek underworld, the river Styx is what divides the land of the dead and the actual realm of the underworld, hence what you see in the movie Hercules, as well as what would happen if you touch the river Styx itself. This means that Enkanomia is sitting right on top of the border between the land of Tevet and that of the Abyss, so we might find some lore or story about the Abyss itself as well as certain individuals or creatures that roam within it. Considering the last time we encountered the Abyss, we saw our friend Dainsleaf go into some portal along with her sibling. Other than that, we can also inhale some copium and find the swordswoman named Skirk, the person who taught Ajax, or child, how to fight in the Abyss. And now for a quick bonus. For this bonus, we're going to look at Kokomi's clothing and its relation to the baptismal bishop's boss fight in Enkanomiya. Her clothing and the patterns on it nearly has the same color as the two baptismal bishops that we see in the trailer. Whether or not that means something, we won't know until then. For now, I'll assume that it was made from the bishops and that they are one of the enemies of the kingdom of Enkanomiya, much like the deep sea dragonair. And there you have it, all 10 things you might have missed about Enkanomiya in the 2.4 trailer and special program. I'll be making one for Liyue specifically, but probably less than 10, so be sure to wait for that until then. And the Heavenly Principles video is gonna have to wait because of the new content thrown at us by MiHoYo, so do wait for that as well. That's gonna be it for this video, I'll see you guys later, bye!